give God some praise up in this place. Lift your hands to the Lord of Lords and the Kings of Kings. Oh, give God some praise this morning. Adore your Father this morning. Hallow his name this morning. For he is worthy to be praised. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We adore you, God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Good morning, Excel Church. How are you doing? Oh, come on now. We can do better now. How are you doing this morning? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Greetings to those of you joining us via uh, live stream. We're glad to have you guys online with us. And I pray that, uh, that God reaches you in a special way this morning. Amen? Uh, I had to make an announcement. I forgot what I had to say. Oh, God have mercy. Uh, the youth will be back in the building. Somebody. Not Wednesday. Not Wednesday. Sunday, Easter Sunday, and the first Wednesday in May. Middle Snick was right the first time. Okay, okay. God forbid we'll be honest in church. I forgot, we forgot, it's just that simple and we made the correction, amen? You know, one thing I try to do in this church and in this pulpit is let you know it's okay to be wrong. It's okay to be wrong. It's, it's okay to miss it sometimes. I think we go through life trying to be right all the time, and you're not right all the time. It's okay to be wrong. And part of the DNA of this ministry is we, 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 we thrive on relevant transparency. Not fleshiness now. Not worldliness, but relevant transparency, letting you know that, hey, we miss it. We ride the church, and we get snippy sometimes at each other too. But we get it together, and we repent, and we come out, come out here and preach the word. But my God. You know, you, when you're born again, you're not exempt from living life. Oh, man, I, I'm, I'm so ready to get into this service this morning. We're starting a new series, and the title of the series is real fancy, Relationships. Relationships. And um, it's going to be good. Um, I, I want to warn you, it's going to get thick. Uh, it may bring up some hurt. It may bring up, uh, it's going to get thick. Uh, it's going to generate questions. It's going to generate uh, gratitude, thankfulness. It's going to generate some whys. It's going to generate some, can you tell me why again? It's, it's going to generate that, but that's okay. God is in the center. Why? God is in the center of every relationship. We keep self out of the middle, and we keep God in the center. So as it gets thick and the questions may arise, just answer the questions honestly. Amen? I said, Amen. Amen. With a certainty of truth. Are you ready for the word? Yes. Father God, we thank you for your wisdom. And God, we thank you for your revelation. We declare that it flows freely, unhindered, uninterrupted by any satanic or demonic force. Father, speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind, not of me and all of you. And God, I decrease so that the word of God may increase into the ears of these, your precious people. The Holy Spirit, you have the liberty to move up and down every hour, in and out of every road, touch, hear, deliver, set free. Every computer screen, every TV screen, every household move and have your way. Overwhelm us with your presence this morning. Father God, your word is true. It's like a two-edged sword dividing asunder. And God, in this holy interaction with our ground, our ears, our heart, and your seed, which is the word of God, God, we reverence that time with you. And we thank you in advance for answers. We thank you in advance for manifestations. We thank you in advance for deliverance and breakthroughs. Father, we give you all the honor, all the glory, and all of the praise. And it's in Jesus' name, and Excel Church said, amen. Let's give God some praise one more time. You may be seated in the house of God. Woo. Tell you what, y'all barking about that cold weather, and that bear is out here now. You know, and when I was in high school, I used to have to work and save money, so I did masonry work. And uh, I, I picked peaches. I picked peaches in the summer. And my first summer picking peaches, that fur got on me. I went out the old pretty, and that fur got on me with a little short sleeve shirt, little shorts. Man, I got back on that bus. I was itching so bad. 
I was like, man, forget the Nike cap in Tennessee. I ain't trying to, I ain't trying to collect no more money. I mean, that peach orchard, it, I mean, it flat out put it on me. But we had the same. When we, when we got off that bus at 6 o'clock to pick those peaches, we would say, hey, we got from 6 to 12. At 12 o'clock, that bear's coming out. All the older guys saying bear. I was like, what, what, what bear? What, what, what is the bear? Man, is it, it going to growl? Is it an animal? What is it? Man, when that sun came out, there's one older guy say, the bear is here. And I have no hat, no sleeves, none of that stuff, itching, hot, guys picking more peaches than me, cashing in, talking about the money they're making. I was like, you ain't never got to worry about me coming back out here like this again in my life. And man, I got on that bus, got home, and, and showered. My dad, said, how, my dad said, how was it? I said, I said it, was just, it was rough. They kept telling me about that bear. He's the oldest son. I said, man, why you tell me about the son? <laughs> but the bear is here now. He's in Florida. So don't be cheap with your J.A. Get the sprinkler system on. Your grass is going to be turning brown, and you're going to be blaming your lawn care guy. Hey, ain't his fault. It's, you got to put some water on that stuff. The bear is here, 90 degrees. Now, we're about to have some fun in the Word of God, and I want to encourage you to have fun with me. And at the same time, what we're going to talk about uh, makes the world go around. Somebody said, what, women? Nope, relationships. Uh, relationships make the world go around. You know, when they're healthy, when they're, when they're thriving, man, we're feeling good. When they're not thriving, man, we, 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 we're down. And, and because we are wired for human connection. We are wired to connect with humans. We're not wired to be isolated. We are wired to connect with humans. There's one thing to go to Disney World by yourself and ride all the rides. There's another thing to go to Disney World with about two or three people or uh, four or five couples and just have fun, watch the different personalities, and watch people like Aisha who says, I don't ride, I stand at the bottom, just leave your book bags with me. I'm not getting on the roller coaster, so you got to designate a holder. And watch the guy who says, oh, this ain't going to be nothing. Get on there, he's terrified, screaming, <laughs> screaming like a little, little, little girl or whatever it is. And, and, but, but the enjoyment, the experiences, the, the interactions, the the, 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 the fun times, you know, we thrive in human connection. I want you to write this down in your notes. The greatest craving of a human being is to be accepted. Is to be accepted. You want to be accepted in your homes. You want to be accepted in your church. You want to be accepted on your job. You want to be accepted in your business. You want to be accepted. Hey, you don't want to pull up to nobody's house and they look at you like you're funny. You got your own thing. You want to pull up. You want to be accepted. You want to be acknowledged that, hey, I'm here to do a professional job and, you, and, and you're acknowledging that. We want to be accepted. So to go through life as a believer and say, nah, that's not true. I don't want to be accepted. That is a lie. We as believers, we want to be accepted. We want to be accepted. And we're going to talk about relationships. And this thing may go 12 weeks because it's so, uh, the word that came to mind as I was studying this thing out for the last four months, it's dynamic. Just like me, I'm dynamic. I'm a dynamic husband. One day I'm this, one day I'm that. I'm dynamic. I'm dynamic. One day I'm cooking, next day I'm asking for food. I'm dynamic. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, one day, I'm, one day I'm washing, next day I'm asking where's my t-shirt said. I'm dynamic. She's the same way. This, this thing is dynamic, so the relationships are the same way. They're, 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 they're dynamic, man. <clears throat> Glory to God. So let's define relationships. Let's look it up. A lot of times, you know, I'm big on knowing what words mean. Simple stuff. Uh, relationships. Now, this is probably somebody's first time even hearing the definition of relationships from Mr. Webster. <clears throat> A state of affairs existing between those having relations or dealings. A state of affairs existing between those having relations or dealings. A relationship takes two parties. You can have a relationship with a person. You can have a relationship with a thing. You can have a relationship with time. It takes two parties to have a relationship. Now, the most important relationship, believe it or not, um, uh, in our lives is the relationship with yourself. You got to be able to love yourself. You, you, you got to know who you are. You know, we, we read so many books about how to relate to other people and don't, don't read books about how to relate to ourselves. In other words, I understand my hard wiring. I, 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 don't, I, don't do well with, I don't do well with funniness and weirdness. I, 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 just, I just don't do well with that. That's a hard wiring with me. I don't do well with it. But you got to understand yourself before you get involved with the, in a relationship with others. And I was thinking about this. Relationships... 
I know me and my wife's relationship. <laughs> now, now, I told you, if I want to build in transparency, she's like, what are you getting ready to say? <laughs> me and my wife's relationship was, was I don't want to say coerced, but we was in church, and we was told, hey, you got Mariante, Man, you're living in sin. You got to get married. And when you get married, your business is going to take off. I'm like, well, shoot, we're young and, and this and that. I'm like, hey, I don't, I don't want to be... I don't want to be shacking up and living in sin, man. I'm trying to build this thing worldwide. And so we went ahead and we got married. Did we like each other? Yes. Did we love each other? Uh, I don't know. We didn't know yet. We didn't, we didn't even know that yet. Didn't even know what love meant. So a lot of times in relationships, they're forced. Now, I don't, not forced, but they're, they're, they're coerced. It's, hey, we got a kid. We might as well go ahead and, 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 and get married. And, 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 and that's the honorable thing to do. But a lot of times we do that not realizing you're about to get in a relationship with someone else for a lifetime. And watch this. You don't know them yet. You never know a person when you first meet them. Relationships evolve over time. If you want to be miserable dating, try to fall in love without being valued first. So you're not looking for love. You're looking, okay, am I valued here? You know, is there any value going towards me in this relationship? But if you're looking for the goo goo gaga first, man, that goo goo gaga stuff is going to wear off. You want to you want to sense that 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 you're being valued by the person. <clears throat> so relationships is a state of affairs existing between those rela- uh, a state of affairs existing between those having relations or dealings. And you know, God did not design relationships to compete with Him. He designed them to point us to him. You got to recognize God-ordained relationships. And sometimes in relationships, it gets tough. It's not the time to get pointed away from God. Tough relationships, God-ordained relationships, marriages, covenant relationships, they should point you back to God to course correct it. They should point you back to God to course correct it. Now, I've been in, I've been in, I guess, ministry for, for about 20 years now, over 20 years now. And I've seen a relationship come, I've seen them go. I've seen them, I've seen them, I, I, I've, I've seen them at the highest covenant, and I've, and I've seen them, the highest covenant go from, man, I honor you to I hate you. And I always ask myself, how in the world does that even happen? I'll tell you how it happens, because people are not honest in the genesis of relationships. And especially in the nation when it comes to serving. When it comes to serving, if you're not honest from your heart, you're going to think you're being taken advantage of. And the person never knows that you feel that way. Because when I serve, I did it from my heart. I did it because God told me to. So I never expected any other thing from any other, any, uh, anybody. But there was other guys who did it expecting something from it other than God rewarding them and taking care of them. And guess what? Those were the guys who, 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 who turned around and said, I hate your guts. You took advantage of me. How in the world I take advantage of you? How in the world he take advantage of you? There's no such thing as taking advantage of someone when you are on the offense of serving them. But if you're lying and serving, you're going to feel like you're being taken advantage of. Let me get back in here. Let me read this to you. Love is one of the most profound emotions known to human beings. Love is one of the most profound emotions known to human beings. This thing called love is a source of deep Fulfillment. That's what we want from relationships. We want deep fulfillment. And that fulfillment has stair steps to it. It has levels to it. If you're married, the, the, the fulfillment from your marriage is not going to be the same as the fulfillment from your covenant brother, your sports partner, whatever it is. This thing called love is, is a source of deep fulfillment. Now, it's important that you hear me because the, if you want your relationship to be rich, and, and, and thrive into the, into the years to come, you know, this year we'll be married 25 years. But if we're going to make it to 40, we, we got to continue to be honest, and we, we're always researching where do, where do we derive from? Where, where do we derive from? What kind of house did you come out of? How did you see your dad? How did you see your mom? Because the clearer you can see that, the more authentic this thing is going to be. But if you can't see that as a daughter, if you can't see that as a wife, what's going to happen is we're going to have a life arrangement, but not a covenant marriage. 
Why? A covenant marriage is so vulnerable, they know everything about you, your ugliness, your weakness, your fears, your doubts. They know your father's house inside and out. But if you're not getting a deep fulfillment from your relationships, nine times out of ten, without that vulnerability we're talking about, what's happening is you, 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 um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? You are codependent. And I've been there, done that. When I thought I was thriving in my marriage, but in actuality, because my mom had passed, and I never had therapy for it, never really put it before God, I was codependent on my wife to replace her. And boy, that was too much pressure. And, and vice versa. She, she comes up, dad leaves, out of the house, uh, uh, does his thing, breaks covenant in the marriage, and guess what? I think she was four, seven years old. And, 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 and that authority figure left her life at seven years old. Think of the abandonment and the, and the brutality that had on her trust in relationships, especially when it came to men. So when you get born again, you never deal with these things. Your husband or your wife is going to pay a price or you two guys just become codependent and we don't talk about that stuff. We have a life arrangement. We're happy. We got food on the table. Let's not get into stuff like that. And I'm, I'm like this. That's a waste of time. Brute honesty generates a deep love in relationships. Amen. How in the world can you say you're in a great relationship with somebody and they never tell you anything about themselves? You know how it is. Four guys standing around, five guys standing around, and everybody else is explaining what they're going through and this, 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 this. And one or two ain't saying nothing. It's like, how do I even get to know you? If you don't be vulnerable with me, I can't. I can't know you. I know what you present to me in this relationship, but I don't know you. And that's how you hurt people. You don't know you hurt people. Shoot, I didn't know you didn't like uh, 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 Nickelodeon playing on the TV. I, I, I didn't know you called that witchcraft. I, I, I didn't know when I flipped the, tune, flipped the TV to Disney trying to show you something. I, I, I didn't know that you, I, don't, I don't watch Disney. Oh, that's the devil. I, I didn't, you never told me that. And you get mad, you never come back around. I'm like, man alive, I never knew you thought like that. I never knew you was that religious. You never told me that. You, oh, you, you never even explained that to me. Yeah, I was, you know, you know, you, you, you know uh, my, my wife want to get with your wife and just kind of you know, help her with her makeup. Well, she don't wear makeup. Where I come from, she don't wear makeup. This 10 years later now. When I came up in church, no makeup, no, no pants, no shorts, none, none of that stuff. Man, I'm just not hearing that. Well, well, my gosh. How in the world is that possible? Because you're not in a relationship. You're in a, you're in a spy game. <laughs> you're getting all the ammunition of their weaknesses, and you ain't saying nothing about yours in that relationship. That's not a relationship. I was reading as I was researching, researching, they said the greatest disservice a mother can do to a daughter is not share her vulnerabilities with her daughter. That daughter has to see her weaknesses, has to hear her struggles, has to hear how she navigates relationships because girls in relationships is a big thing, buddy. Your hair better be together, your skin better be together, your lipstick better be together, your clothes better be together. And, and they're going through all this stuff. But if mama never tells her daughter about her vulnerabilities and what she goes through, let me tell you something. What other sounding board is she going to have? They say, it's, they say it has a great breach on that daughter's confidence once she gets into that world. And dads have to validate their sons. Period. <clears throat> Let's keep going here. So it has a deep fulfillment. Although on the surface it appears that there's the, the, the need for... Although on the surface it appears that the need for human connection... It's innate. It's not. It's learned. It's learned. We're not born with this innate thing to work a room. <laughs> We're not born with this innate thing to, to, to walk in a house and say, hey, how you doing? We're not born with it. You know, uh, you, you, there, there's some kids that can walk into a room. And they can say, hey, how you doing? Shake your head. And there's some walking to a room, and they don't say nothing. And that has to stop. Why? Because it's cute when they're 10, 11, and 12. But if they don't know how to walk into that training room and that boardroom, 
and talk and, and, and network and talk to everybody. Listen, education teaches us very little about navigating human relationships. So it exalts GPAs, and you get these people with these GPAs in academics, but you put them in a room with different personalities, and they fail miserably. Why? Because they're not used to the strong personality. They're not used to people saying, no, it's going to go. They're not used to that. So what happens? They fail miserably. They clam up. They become obscure. Why? They never had any relationship training growing up outside of their household. And God forbid, if the, if the mama is quiet and private, nine times out of ten, the daughter's going to be the same way. Now, I know what I'm talking about because my wife was super private when we first got in church. I said, I feel like we need to get, uh, 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 uh. And I feel like we need to go, we need to sit down and talk, uh, 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 I don't want no, uh, 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 uh. And I was the same way. She said, I feel like you really need to talk to somebody about, uh, I don't want no men in my, I, I don't want. And it's like, okay, you don't want no men or, or, or these people or these ministers in your business, but here's the reality. You're drowning in your marriage. Because you weren't self-taught in this now. And you're really not adhering to the word of God in this relationship. You're drowning, Derek. So you're going to be private and you're going to be divorced. That's what's going to happen. Or you're going to open up your phone and say, hey, we're trying to put this thing together. We're trying to make this relationship work, and we, just, we, we have some problems. I come from, from, a, from a divorce home. She comes from a divorce home, and we seem like we're codependent, but we're looking for that fire, that, those fireworks to really go off, and, and it's like they're not going off. So sometimes I'm aggravated with her. Sometimes she's aggravated with me. Sometimes I don't speak to her. Sometimes she doesn't speak to me, and we're trying to figure out what in the world is going on, and here's what's going on. Is what we derived from. We had no relationship. The only relationship training we seen, me and my wife, was if you don't like them, leave. So guess what? My wife told me six years later, she said, Derek, I never told you this. She said, but when we got married, I just assumed that one day we'll be divorced. I said, good, grace was alive. She, I said, why did you assume that? She said, that's all I knew. I just, I just assumed, hey, you, you get tired of somebody, leave. That's what my dad did. He got tired and he left. Think about that now. <clears throat> this is going to be a fun series. So it appears to be innate, uh, 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 the, the, the ability to form these relationships, it appears to be innate, but it's learned. And I want to ask you a question. What have you learned about relationships? Most of our learning about relationships, we really learn when we're hurt. We never learn when we got good people in our lives. We, we would never even pick up anything from that. It's when we're hurt we start, we, we call ourselves learning, and we say things like, you know what, I never, you ain't got to worry about me, such, such, such. So you learn when you're hurt in relationships, but you don't learn when they're rich. And the world has trained us, you only learn from relationships when you're hurt, but never acknowledge when they're good. Never send a thank you card. Never say thank you. Never say, hey, without you, I wouldn't be where I am. Never say stuff like that. But when they let you down, that's when you start learning. And that's a bad way to learn about relationships. Why? It generates isolation and loneliness. I was thinking about this. You know, <laughs> brother, you know, I don't want to die alone. You know, I want companionship. You know, and my companion is, is, is my wife and, and, and other friends and, and kids and soon to be married kids and all this kind of stuff, then grandkids and all this kind of stuff. I want companionship. I'll never forget. I was listening to Dr. Dollar in the minister conference about five years ago. He said, man, I'm, 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 I'm in the back building up for the anointing and telling everybody to be quiet and, and don't nobody knock on my door and I don't want nobody to interrupt the anointing. He said, one day I realized, man, I'm lonely back here. Back here, get, 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 them, get my kids, get, let them in here. I'm, I'm, I'm lonely. And I think that's powerful. I think that's powerful in church. You know, because just because I pass it on me and I, got, I don't have buddies. Let me say this to you. The pastor nor the members can have personal relationships with everybody in the church. That's impossible. The pastor or the members can have personal relationships with everybody in the church. That's impossible. 
And we get in trouble when we think that, 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 that the pastor got a personal relationship with everybody. Well, the member, this member has a personal relationship with everybody. That's not even so. And, you know, when we start saying stuff like, oh, they're just clickish. They're not clickish. They've been on each other for 25 years. They're not clickish. <laughs> They've been on each other for 15 years. They know one another's false. They know one another's private. Like, they, 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 well, what do you mean they're clickish? When you see a strong relationship, nine times out of ten, it's dual vulnerability. Brother, I'm really going through, man. Yeah, yeah me too. I'm trying to figure this thing out, man. I, hey, hey, brother, get yourself in line now. No, 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 no. I don't want to hear about your wife. She's a good woman. You need to get yourself in line. Get back over there. Get in the Word of God and get yourself together. Yeah, but brother, look. I know what I'm talking about. Just two weeks ago, I told you what was going on with us. And, and those kind of relationships, they're strong. And we label them as clickish. No, there's dual vulnerability. Well, I'm, I just feel lonely in church because you don't tell nobody nothing. You spy. And they pick up on that. And go, that was just a spy lunch right there. I shared all my vulnerabilities. She didn't say a dog gonna say about what she was going through. Just spying. I told you it's gonna get thick. <clears throat> Woo! Glory to God. We're, we're getting there. And you know, people are starving for thriving relationships. People are also scared of relationships. People are also suspicious of relationships. And people are also enjoying their relationships. People are starving for thriving relationships. That's why if you're single in the dating scene, you want to detect value before you try to feel like you're in love. Does he value you? Does she value you? That's going to mean everything. But if you're looking for the goo goo ga ga love, you want to feel loved and the fireworks going to go... Nine times out of ten, you know, you, you set eyes on them and go, that could be something right there. From there, <laughs> it's, it's dating. It's gathering the root word. I'm gathering data now. You, I'm gathering data about you. You're gathering data about me. Now, let's talk about your household. What kind of family did you come up in? I, the, 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 you, the, there's a show that we watch, and I was telling my wife yesterday, I said, I want to sit down with Deacon Rupal, and I want to watch this show with her. Her and Deacon uh, Wells. Because it's about the, the, the Indian culture. And it's, the, you know, the, 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 the arranged marriages and stuff like that and how serious they take it. And, and the family, you know, you, when you come to the wedding, you better have a lump sum of cash, some kind of nice gift on this side. But over here, I'm trying to outgift you on this family, this, that, and the other. But boy, they take that thing serious. You know why? You're not marrying the individual. You're marrying the family. And that family is checking you out. What does she do for a living? Oh, she's an artist. Not in IT. <laughs> Not a doctor. Well, she's just expressing herself. You know, she, she oh, wow. Oh, oh, gosh. Man, why? Because there's certain standards that they have. So, you, so you're, marrying, you're marrying the family, but, 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 but. If you skip the part of gathering data about that, you're going to walk into a social firestorm. Everybody looking at you all crazy. Your little, your little fingers are, are, are got, are got, got uh, 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 ink on them and, and, and this, that, and the other. You, you dressed all arts. They're trying to figure out, figure out why are you here? <laughs> why are you here? Why? Because you're marrying the family. But if you never gather data on the family that you're marrying into, Man, you're going to make a grave mistake in that relationship. So I'm, I'm in love. I'm going to marry her anyway. And her dad disagrees with it. Her parents disagree with it. You're marrying the family, brother. We're going to run off Bonnie and Clyde. She's going to come to a census. After about two, two motels with roaches in it, she's going to realize <laughs> this brother is totally incapable of taking care of me. The thrill is over. The thrill is gone. What would you say? The thrill is gone. B.B. King or... Oh, Bobby Bland, one of them, the thrill is gone. <laughs> my granddad and daddy's paper, I got it on my phone. Bobby Bland and B.B. King. <laughs> the thrill is gone. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> Matthew 22. 
People are starving for relationships, thriving relationships. They're scared of relationships. They're enjoying relationships, and they're also suspicious. I was very suspicious of committing to my wife when we first met. Years into it, I was very suspicious of giving her all of me. I was just suspicious. I didn't know if I was going to pay a price. She's going to take my heart, tear it up, and throw it on the ground. I was just suspicious because I, always, I would always hear about the story, the childhood story. I would always hear about how hard it was for her to trust the authority figure of the man. I would always hear that, and I didn't hear it with pure ears through the word of God. I heard it, and it generates suspicion. And what I began to do in that suspicion is I began to kind of let me pull back a little bit because I don't quite know where this thing is going. I was suspicious, and I shouldn't, I shouldn't have been like that. So Matthew 22, here we go. <clears throat> Say amen if you're out there. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We're all family up in this place and we're out there on online. <clears throat> Matthew 22, verse 37. <clears throat> Jesus said unto him, you shall love the Lord. This is after the lawyer attempted Jesus and tried to call, you know, question Jesus. You always got the one in the crowd to try to test you. And Jesus said, said to the lawyer, Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord thy God. The guy's asking, well, who is my neighbor? Who, who, who is my neighbor? The Good Samaritan story. You shall love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. Now write that, that up, up, up outside that scripture or in your notes, write down relationship blueprint. Notice the word all. You cannot be in a relationship and it's 90-10. It's got to be 100-100. It's got to be 100%, 100% in. Now, it may not happen over uh, uh, day one, but you got to have that on your mind that, that this is not, I don't love you with some of my heart. I don't love you with some of my soul. I don't love you with some of my mind. No, it says, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy mind. Watch this. This is the first and great commandment. Write in your notes. The first and great commandment was on relationships. It's dealing in love. Notice that. It's a relational word. <clears throat> Man, think about that. This is the first and great commandment, and the second one, more relationship stuff, <laughs> is like unto it that you shall love thy neighbor as you love yourself. Let me tell you something. If you're a born-again believer and you don't know your neighbor on the left of where you live and the right of where you live, adjacent to where you live. Right there and right there, something's wrong. They should, know, they, they should know something about you. You know, my neighbor came over. He's like, he's, Derek, he's, he's a lawyer. Uh, 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 Tony's 41. Yeah, he came, he's, 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 hey, Derek, he said, I got some birthday cake left from my, uh, my, uh, my son's birthday. You want any? I said, I'm a vegan. And uh, I think he turned to, uh, I, think, uh, I think Jeff might have been there, Minister Jeff. He said, you want to say, no, he said, I'm vegan. He said, my God, both of you guys are vegan, huh? So, so, so I, and I said, well, shoot. I said, I said no. I said, I said, matter of fact, I said, because I said, uh, uh, Reese had his icy truck over there. I said, I said, Reese, can I get an icy for, for his son? And uh, he's just had a birthday party. His son came out there. Man, those eyes got phew, that big. He got that icy cup, just that, and the other. And, and, and Tony said, tell him thank you now. And then he says, thank you. And later on, uh, uh, Tony sent a text, thanks for loving on my son. You, it's a neighbor. And I got another neighbor who says, he walks out of the house, you're the most diligent man I ever met before in my life, and I'm from Haiti. <laughs> he's, I've, he's, I've never seen any, he said, I've never met anybody like you. He said, it's just unbelievable, Derek. I said, hey, man, I... I take care of my wife, take care of my cars, take care of my house, take care of my, I got my kids, I, I got to stay on top of it. I'm, 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 I'm about that action. I'm Marshawn Lynch. I'm about that action. And, 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 and we get to talking, so I, I know all about him. I know all about him. Got across the street from the UK. 
you know, Pastor Jeremy was over to the house. She said, she says, I said, hey, uh, they didn't pick your boxes up. And I knew they don't pick up TV boxes. You better break that baby down because that TV box will mess up that trash compact. They will not pick up a big screen TV box when you set it out there by your trash can because it's going to jam the thing up. I said, I said, I said we'll get in and take care of it. She said, are you sure? <laughs> How kind of you. <laughs> oh, my God. And I said, like, yep, I, I will do it. <laughs> Thank you, Derek. And uh, then I got another guy who stayed right, right, right across the thing. <laughs> Guy on several Dodge dealerships. He's, he, 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 he's all over the southeast, and uh, 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 he comes out every time. Get on his golf cart. He'll say, he'll, he, he'll say to me, "Boy, you keep it looking good over there." What's you up to this week, Derek? I, said, I don't know. I just my wife like these flowers right here, so I'm gonna go ahead and put them in the ground for. Her. All right, all right, man. I, hey, did you hear those dogs? I said, "Yeah, I heard them. I, I heard them." Hey, I, let me show you a picture here. I caught a rattlesnake. Uh, right there in the backyard. He's, look how big he is right there now. Now, now he, I, I said, my God. Now, he didn't make it across your way, but he, boy, he was headed that way. I said, man, why? So I know my neighbors. I know how to be friendly to my neighbors. He says, he says these are the two greatest commandments. He says, love, to go out, love God with all your heart, your mind, your soul. That's the first great commandment. And the second one, and he's really quoting Deuteronomy 6 or 5, I think it is. He's really quoting that. The second one is like unto it, you shall love thy neighbor as you love yourself. And on these two commandments, hang all the law of the prophets. <clears throat> Listen to me. Woo. Yeah, Deuteronomy 6, he's quoting. Jesus was showing us the continuation of God's moral law, moral law, found in the Old Testament. And summing it up as a law of love, not replacing it. Of course, we're talking about the moral law here, not the ceremonial laws which Christ did away with at the cross. See, love has always existed. Old Testament, New Testament. Love, Jesus just amplified it. How do you love your neighbor? The way you love yourself. Well, I take care of myself. Well, if your neighbor's in need. Do your best to help them out. Well, I protect myself. Well, if your neighbor's in danger, you do your best to, to help them out. My, my, one of my neighbors in danger, and I was outside, and um, I violated the law. I violated the uh, help your neighbor. Uh, somebody said, why? Because the dogs were fighting. And um, I was outside, and I heard somebody go, oh, God, no, this can't be happening. Stop. Oh, my blankety blank. What is going on? Oh, Lord. Oh, no, she's going to kill. She's going to get. And they, got a, they have a Doberman and a Yorkie. And you know, Yorkies are charging and stop. You ain't going to do nothing. And, <laughs> and they both exist together. And man, that Doberman fit, was fed up with it that day and let this, this last on to it. And the husband's on the ground in the dry, on the driveway wrestling with him, the wife trying to get the yolk out of the, 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 the dog's mouth, and man, everybody's screaming, and, and, and I'm just, <laughs> love your neighbor now, I, I'm Lord releasing, <laughs> that dog, no, no, I go over there trying to pull something away, I'm going to be the meal for the day, I said, no way, said, let me just, shoot. Lord, I pray, you know, I ain't running over there, so I violated that. But, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. It says, as you love yourself, we should protect too. You know, my neighbors go out of town and say, hey, Derek, I'll be out of, I'll be out of the country. I'll be, I'll be out of town. Just, just FYI. Okay. What are they saying? You see something crazy going on? You know, FYIs. So we should love our neighbors as we love ourselves. <clears throat> Man, it's, 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 it's going to get thick here. And you know, Obedience does not lead to love. But love does lead to obedience. For God so loved the world that he gave. He was obedient to what was in his heart. It was out of love. Love does lead to obedience. In relationships, 
We're going to see in the word of God here. Just looking at the father and the son. Looking at the blueprint. Of certain elements we should have in our foundation. As we move through this series of relationships. <clears throat> so obedience does not, does not lead to love. But love leads to obedience. By saying love the Lord. By saying love the Lord. With all thy heart, soul, and mind, Christ is revealing that the love of God, if it's truly present in us, will permeate every aspect of our being. Somewhere deep down inside of you, when the love of God is in there, somewhere deep down in there, you recognize, I'm not loving the way God loved me. I'm, I'm just not. This is not right. This is, this, is, this is not of God. You know, he placed that in us. And I think we, if, 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 if we as a body of believers can get a revelation of what Jesus is trying to tell this lawyer who's trying to be slick about, well, who should my love go to? How, how should I love God? You give him your all. You give him your all. And there's something in relationships called covenant. You know, marriage is a covenant relationship, but the two girlfriends may not have a covenant relationship. It may be what we call a uh, inner court, maybe a holy of holy. Holy of holy has no spies in it. I tell my wife, I said, boy, I can sit around. I, I just, I don't eavesdrop, but if you're standing talking to five women, y'all just flat out let it rip. <laughs> Y'all let it rip what's going on. I mean, just let it fly. I said, but guys, they, they don't, they just don't do that. And I'm a firm believer, that's why they can never experience a true covenant relationship with men of God because guys are guarded. Some women are guarded, but there's other women. Man, you, sit, you, you get five of them talking about PMS, they letting it rip. Talking about weight, they letting it rip. Everything, they letting it rip. Why? Because they're just, I, I don't know what it is about women in relationships, but they just, they just, they're just real. They're just real with one another. And that's what we're trying to be. We're trying to be real with one another. We want, we want divine relationships driven by the God in us. And sometimes that's, that, that comes with, hey, just so you guys know, Man, I'm so afraid of that right there. That's right. That's right. Just, just so you guys know, I really I deal with that, and it just wreaks havoc on my soul. Yeah. Just so you guys know, every Mother's Day, when you guys are talking about your, your mothers and what you're about to do, mine is gone. Just so, just so you know, that's why I get, I, it, it wreaks. I'm so sad on that day. And those four women may go, you know what? What we're going to do is this year we're going to see our moms early on Saturday, but we're going to make sure that we take her out and celebrate, uh, celebrate with her. That is, that is, that is. That's a covenant relationship. I got relationship I call silly relationships. They'll never be there for me and when it gets tough, but man, we just, we're just silly together. And, and I understand that. <laughs> they don't ever tell me nothing, I don't ever tell them nothing. <laughs> I understand that, I'm, I'm okay with that. <clears throat> and you know, <clears throat> relationships, here we go, is a social Investment, that's where I want to get to. All relationships, if they're going to thrive, better have an investment component to it. It's a social investment. Galatians 6. Let's look at it. It's a social investment. That's why, you know, I said we're going to grow up in this series. We're going to stop saying stuff like, well, they ain't called me yet. Well, have you called them? No, they ain't called me yet. Well, have you called them? No, well, they ain't called me yet. You do realize you're indicting yourself when you say that. Because <laughs> you ain't called. They ain't reached out to me yet. You're indicting yourself. What are you saying? You jump first and then I'll jump. Oh, my God. That relationship will never thrive like that. Hey, you heard from old boy? Man, he ain't called me yesterday. I ain't called him. Man, what in the world is that? You mean to tell me you want all of that, 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 that 
a social investment coming towards you without you sowing anything? Well, she hadn't called me yet, so I ain't picked up the phone. Oh, so you don't think investment is a part of a relationship? You don't think sometimes you got to sow the call. You got to sow the text to reap the text. You got to sow the call to reap the call. You don't think that? You know, in studying for this thing and researching, they said that a phone call dwarfs text social media reactions 97% as far as emotional attachment to 3%. They said, do not be fooled by people who wish you happy birthday on your social media page and the person that texts you happy birthday or call you and say happy birthday or say lunch is on me today for happy birthday. And, but you're looking at 200 people who click like, they are clicking 200 more times somewhere else. It was just something that came on their feed. They hit it. But we're trained to go this way instead of realizing, wait a minute, this person called me. This person texted me. Good gracious a lot. They said, they said the phone call dwarfs them all. That investment, it dwarfs them all. Why? Nowadays, it takes energy to make a phone call. Don't be fooled by it. Don't be fooled by it. Now, I ain't stepping on your social media toes, but I tell you what, I ain't fooled by it no more. I seen a meme on social media about five years ago. Everybody was coming on, coming on. And it, it, it was just the saddest thing I ever seen before. I said, "Man, this thing is cruel." And um, uh, the thing came on and said, "Is is she really this beautiful?" As they t they're telling her, and it had a little thing on it. And, and and what people do on social media is they will exaggerate stuff, and you start to buy into it. Oh my gosh, you look like you're 13 years old again. No, you don't. You just don't know what to say. Everybody else don't say it. Happy birthday. Everybody else don't say happy birthday. Best wishes to you. Everybody else don't say it. Oh, may you have glorious years ahead of you. Everybody else, so you look and you go, well, shoot, let me just shock the thread. You look like you're 13. Now. What are you doing? Stop lying. Stop exaggerating. She does not look like she's 13. He does not look like he's 13. I said, man, I'm tired of this. I, I, can't, I can't deal with this. So it's a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a social investment. Galatians 6, verse 1. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, uh, you which are spiritual, look at the nature of this relationship, you which are spiritual, restore such uh, and one in the spirit of what? Meekness, relationship word. Considering thyself. <laughs> See, restoration is at its strongest when we consider it could be us. See, when a guy's going through or a girl is going through in their relationship, in their marriage, a woman or a man is going through, you know, you can either say, I tried to tell you it was going to happen. Or you can say, look, man, you messed up. You, re you messed up big time. She may take you back. She may not. But here's what I want you to know. God still loves you. I do not dismiss the doggone sin you, you, you did. I do not dismiss the boundaries you crossed. I need you to understand that. And I am not dismissing her anger at you. So please don't ask me to love you and ignore her. That's not going to happen. But you were wrong. Why would I even talk like that? Consider yourself. Consider yourself when you fall. Do you want restorers around you or do you want finger pointers and blamers around you? It's a social investment. It says restore such... Uh, and one, in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest also you be tempted. Which means in relationships, we are capable of falling. Watch this now. Verse 2. Here we go. One of the most powerful words in relationships. Bear ye one another. One another. We'll come back to that. Bear ye one another burdens. And so fulfill the law of Christ. We're not in relationships. We're not to exploit the fall. We're to bear the burden of the fall with them. You shouldn't exploit it. You shouldn't forward it. You shouldn't spread it. You shouldn't go on the top of a building and cut the pillow of feathers and let the wind take them everywhere. And then when everything is settled, go try to find them because you spread it something. It's impossible to go find the feathers now. You should have bared the burden. You exploited the fault. 
And in relationships, that is bad. And it's rough when our young kids in school, they get exploited all the time. And we say, tough it up and just get yourself together and get your schoolwork. And they're like, I'm getting my schoolwork, but I'm about to lose my mind. Why? Relationships are important. They need to be taught on. They need to be paid attention to with our children, how to navigate them. Why are you feeling like that? What makes you feel like that? No, no, no. And look, mommy and daddy can say, you're so pretty, you're so this, da, 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 da. But the guy on the eighth seat of the school bus, <laughs> or the girls, the group of girls, the, 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 sometimes they bear more weight than that. And we got to teach our kids how to navigate that. Otherwise, they won't want to go to school. They don't want to face relationships. They can face the books. They don't want to face the relationships. So we teach them and we teach ourselves, don't exploit one another's fault. Bear the burden with the person. Watch this. For if a man or woman think himself to be something, what kills a relationship faster than anything? Pride. We're going to milk this thing. When you think you're something going into dating, not realizing uh, you have faults and flaws too. <laughs> now, you're looking for, you want his family to be nice and tight, but now yours is kind of fragile and fragment too now. So don't interrogate him about his family and you're not telling what's going on with yours. Because a lot of times we can interrogate the other party and withhold our information, our foolishness, and, and, and feel like we're up here. And it's like, no, 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 no. Don't think of yourself like that. Sometimes you got to just lead off with, look, I come from a broken home and um, I haven't had therapy yet as far as my parents being divorced. And here's how I see men. Here's how I see them. I'm not an angry black woman. I'm not a, a prideful white woman. I'm not that. I'm just telling you how I see men based on the hurt I experienced from my father's house. Now let him deal with that. If he says, oh, come on, we'll take care of that. Nah, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. Value me enough to pause and go, wait a minute. That's something you need to get help on. Because I'm in therapy right now, getting help on. Now, now, boy, now, now, you, now you may have something. But if you withhold that information, get married, get in a relationship, and say, aha, gotcha. <laughs> I don't want to have kids. What do you mean you want to have kids? I said to myself, I seen how my single mom struggled bringing up kids. I said to myself, I don't want them. And Billy, please don't pressure me to have kids. <laughs> Man, where's, where is that coming from? Oh, you didn't talk about that. You didn't, you didn't get the data. You didn't mine it out of the relationship. Listen. He says, he says, for if a man think of himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself in that relationship. Again, he hadn't called me, so why am I? You think of yourself to be something? Well, she hadn't reached out. You think of yourself to be something like that? The greatest distribution or the greatest form of love sometimes is when God places you on somebody else's heart and they reach out to you. That's the love of God. And you better start recognizing that stuff and stop recognizing little likes and reactions, all that kind of stuff. People who just simply say, hey, are you okay? So you need to tell me out of 500 to 1,000 people, one or two reach out and it's, well, good, they did. And you can't, you, 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 you can't see, the, you can't see the, the love of God being shed through that interaction. I'm getting there. So if a man think of himself, verse 3, uh, to be something when he's nothing, he deceives himself. Verse 4, but let every man prove his own work, and then, shall he be, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. Avoid codependency in relationships. See, if you don't deal with something uh, before you get in a relationship, the other party in that relationship is going to pay the price for undealt with hurts. They're going to pay the price. The, 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 the bottom line, period, end of sentence, they're going to pay the price. So in relationships, when the Bible says, when, 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 it, says, when it says love thyself, you got to love thyself enough to pay attention to you the most before you say, take my last name. Before you say, I want your last name. No, you got to love yourself the most. Prove your own work, and then, shall, and then you shall have rejoicing in yourself alone. Not in one another. Listen, I don't depend on my wife for happiness. She adds to my existing happiness and joy in the Lord. I, I, she adds to that. And that's just, man, that's just the best. But when you charge a person 
to make you happy, they're going to fail you. Every single time. They should add to, they should supplement your happiness, but they are not the source of your happiness. Well, my wife is, my husband is, well, God, so what do you tell the widows? Just stay sad for the rest of your life because the source of happiness is your spouse. That's, that's what you tell them? No. No. The joy of the Lord, you have to have your own happiness and your spouse adds to that. Or your girlfriend or your homeboy, he adds to that. <clears throat> Relationships. Verse 5. For every man <laughs> shall bear his own burden. Sometimes when you're going through the relationship, you got to go to God yourself. You got to bear your own burden through the word of God. And you got to come out of that interaction with God in that relationship, and you got to come out. And, and listen, I've come out, I've come out of several interactions with God on my knees before him, and I come out and I say to myself, I was wrong. I missed it right there. And I should have made the phone call. Man, I'm, I don't have missed that. What, what am I doing in that relationship? I'm bearing my own burden. You know what that does? It keeps your heart clean. <laughs> so that way you don't get a little fake Christian smile when you come in church. <laughs> hey, 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 how you doing? How you doing? How you doing? It's like, man, two liars <laughs> right there in the atrium. And nobody is saying anything about their birds or their hurts. Nobody's admitting their faults whatsoever. Hey, man, just so you know, that thing I said the other day, forget that. Want to do lunch? Want to come by? You, 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 you want to hang out or whatever it is? What is that? I was wrong. See, as a believer, we got to learn to bear our own birds in relationships. When you miss it, you got to acknowledge that you missed it. When you're not reaching out, you got to acknowledge that you're reaching out. Hey, you have, you heard, have, you ever, have you heard from my boy? Well, I hadn't heard from him, but he ain't heard from me, so we're even. Man, I thought you was going to lash out at him. No, nah, because I hadn't reached out the same way he hadn't reached out. She hasn't reached out the same way I haven't reached out. Now, here's the thing. My kids, they reach out to us all the time on a family thread. There's a certain relationship. You, you, you just, it is what it is. You, you should be reaching out. You know, your mom, your dad, a, a text here, a call here, something. You should be reaching out. Why? It's, it's just an authority issue. You, 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 my, my dad ain't called me, so I ain't going to call. Well, wait a minute now. My mom ain't called me, so well, wait a second now. They don't return my, just reach out. You'd be surprised what a, hey, love you, Dad. Appreciate you. Hey, just, just want you to know, and I, had, I told my dad this probably 10 years, just, I, just, I want you to know, I don't, I release you of anything that the devil is trying to tell you that about me or my anger towards you concerning my mother. I need you to know that you're awesome. I need you to know that I understand what happened. I need you to know that I understand it wasn't just all your fault. I understand marriages break down. I understand that there's sickness in this world brought in by the evil one. I understand that, and I release you. That's maturity. If you sit back as a believer and you want to see somebody suffering hurt, you'd be surprised how that dad is like, it's like he don't call me. He doesn't know how. <laughs> he doesn't know how. My God, if you got a son that's born again or a daughter that's born again, just keep reaching out. Maybe he's learning from you. Maybe you keep him alive a little bit longer, just lifting his heart in that relationship. Well, he don't. Man, there you go. There you go. There you go. No, in these relationships, coming out of this series, we invest. As XL members, we invest in relationships. Now, 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 now listen to me. When people are trying to hurt you, not in your head, not, 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 not the story you got in your head, but they're trying to, and you have physical evidence that they're trying to take you out or hurt you or whatever, which is very minimal most of the time. That's the time when you got you to gotta pull back. But see, I pulled back before in ministry. I pulled back before in my life in relationships. I pulled back because I felt like, well, you ain't investing, I ain't investing. 
And that's wrong. That's not a relationship. We invest when it's up. We invest when it's down, just like the stock market. But it's best when it's down to really invest into it. So now we really know what we have. I'll never forget my uh, covenant brother, Larry Wilson. He, uh, I'll never forget, we were standing off St. Old St. Augustine Road. Remember the house we had off Old St. Augustine? Uh, Old St. Augustine Road. And uh, boy, we got into it. I'm talking, we got into it. Woo! I mean, we got into it arguing. I think we threw a few cuss words out there. 2005, 2006, I mean, we went at it, this, 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 this. Well, I'll tell you what, we can just sell it this. Well, I guess we can sell it that way then. Well, I'll tell you what, you ain't going to talk You ain't gonna talk to me. This, this. And, man, we just flat out went at it. And at the end of the phone call, we started laughing. <laughs> we, just, we just started saying, man, alive, what in the world is going on with us? But, but we're dealing in truth now. Came out of that thing without a smell of smoke. We invested. Talked it through at the low point when the stock was low and the stock is still high. If I call Larry right now, if I call Larry right now, say, Larry, I need you at my house. He's there. No, no questions asked whatsoever. L- Larry, I need $5,000, and I need it right now. It's just like that. He's there. Why? Because we invested in the relationship. Well, do we text and talk every single day? No. No. But the investment is strong. For every man should bear his own burden. My God, I've been trying to get here all service. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teaches in all good things. Verse 7, relationship is an investment. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, he also reaps. Relationship is a social investment. I look at, I look at some of these diggers in this church with 40 years of marriage, 50 years of marriage, and I'm like, man, I'm, I got to go 25 more years. Yeah, not 25 more years withdrawing from your wife. You better be investing. Why? Because your relationship wants an ROI. You want to return on your investment. Let's keep going here. <clears throat> so, so he says, be not deceived, God's not mocked. Whatever you sow, you will reap. If you sow kindness in a relationship, you're going to reap kindness. If you sow love in a relationship, you're going to reap love. If you sow suspicion in a relationship, you're going to reap suspicion. If you sow withdrawal in a relationship, you're going to reap withdrawal. Whatsoever we sow in relationships, we reap. This is why, you know, I've just been thinking about this. Why is Christian dating so hard? Why is it so hard? Well, I mean, what, what is it? I'll tell you what it is. Nobody wants to invest. Everybody wants a surety that Amazon stock is going to be $10,000 a share before they even make a move on it. And it's like no relationship gives you that assurance. No relationship you will have will, 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 will excuse faith. See, most of the time when, when people are dating in relationships, they want a surety of this thing before they fully commit. No such thing. I'm talking about all the way down, all the way down to your wedding party dinner, the night before the wedding. There's no 100% surety. Because the day of, we ask the people, you sure you want to go through with this? You sure? Now, we ask some, we say, I think I need to back out. Boy, you, What? I say, hey, you asked me. I, I don't think I'm. And, and, but, but what is it? You're not going to have surety. It's all by faith. Do you hear what I'm saying? Relationships are by faith. So when you begin to invest and, 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 and you help this person out and you help this person out and, and you do all of this, you, 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 you're doing it by faith because what you're saying is, I'm going to give it 100% investment. Why? I want 100% back. That's by faith because you may get 50. You may get 25. You may get 10%. And then you got to step back and go, okay, now, I'm I'm investing 100. He can only bring back 10. Do I want to go forward with this? I don't know if I want to go forward with this right here. See, here's here's the bottom line. You, 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 when, okay, if you falling in love, causes you to ignore the obvious, you're not in love, you're in lust. 
well, she like this, but I'm going to fix it. Uh, I, I, uh, okay, well, they, okay, they've, been in, they, they've heard 10 years of church, 500 sermons, therapy twice. They meet you, and in 30 days, you're going to fix it. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I told my kids, look, don't be so far in love when you do fall in love that you ignore the obvious. Because here's what happens. When somebody brings out the obvious to you, here's what you say. Y'all don't want me happy. <laughs> That's why I just keep them church folks out of my business because I'm going. And it's like I've seen people prosper in secret, try to prosper in secret and date in secret. And then show up like, look what I got. <laughs> and 10 people in church go, did he know that? Does she know that? Oh, wow. Let me get my popcorn. <laughs> I've counseled a lot of men. They were saying, get out of here. No, 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 she's not like that. That's okay. I put my microwave on three popcorn. That's okay. Well, let, me, let me watch this. Where's the girl at? Man, I should have listened to you. I should have listened to you. What is that? You're so far in love, you ignore the obvious. Last thing. <clears throat> now, when the Bible says be not deceived, God is not mocked, of course, you know, you, you know you're going to sow what you reap, and that's basically what it's saying. This is, essent- this, this, this is an essential mentality if you want to live with habits of reconciliation in your relationship. This mentality, I'm going to sow what I, I'm going to reap what I sow, it's essential if we're going to live with the habits of reconciliation. If you don't have habits of reconciliation in your relationship, you have habits of withdrawal and cut off. And if you do that long enough in that relationship, it will die. It will die. I mean, at some point, when you, when you hit 30, 35 years old, that walking off, being quiet for six minutes, ignoring one another, that is childish to the umph degree. And I'm here to tell you, when you're doing that kind of stuff, something is wrong up here. You're 35. You're 40. You know how to come down and say, what you said hurt me. And it really hurt, so let's talk about it. Now, when you say anything about my weight, you you, you need to make sure you're not insulting me. But what you said hurt me. That's better than pew. Get in the car like you're 18 and you take off and, and come back in. Hey, I got us some Burger King and some, uh, what happened? What did, you just went out and self-medicated and everything is okay now? No text return, no phone call return, and you, you come back in and everything is okay? Something is wrong. What's wrong? They don't have a habit of reconciliation, reconciling. You have to bind to the principle of consequences in relationships. There's consequences to your words and your actions. You're going to reap what you sow. There's consequences. Well, the word will fix it. All right. There's consequences. We have to bind to the, 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 the habits of reconciliation, and we also have to bind to the principle of consequences. In closing, got to pick this up. Uh, not next week, but next week is Easter Sunday. In my notes, I have this down. Warning. Put this down in your notes. Plaster it everywhere. <laughs> Warning. Do not toy with someone's heart and call it love. Do not toy with someone's heart and call it love. See, see, as a husband, a lot of times abusive men get away with stuff because daddy's not on the scene. But daddy ain't got no relationship with daughter, with his daughter. But I tell you what, if daddy's on the scene, all that toying with the heart, the stuff, it ain't gonna fly. And call it love. That's a warning. Or toy with anyone's heart and call it love. Don't do that. Sister, I just love you so much. 
You're just my number one. Until she challenges you. Don't toy with anybody's heart and call it love. I mean, I love heart. I, 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 I go with you. I, I, I'll do it. And I mean every bit of it. I mean every bit of it. I don't, I don't toy around like that. But I know people who do toy around with people's hearts and call it love. Here's what I say to you. Be not deceived. Be not deceived. My wife goes to sleep at night knowing where her husband is. She wakes up knowing where he is. She goes to Ram Fit at 6 a.m. every single morning. And guess what? I know exactly where she at. You find yourself snooping around and all this kind of stuff and this, 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 this. It seems like you're being toyed with there. Seems like you need to talk about something. Don't talk with anybody's heart. God owns that. The only way a man changes or a woman changes in a relationship is not through your, through your good appeal to them. God deals with the heart. You can sex them up in the physical. You ain't touching that heart. If they are committed to you, they are committed to you. I don't care what you do, how much you expose, how wild you get, how nasty you talk. Only God deals with the heart in a relationship. Were you blessed by the word of God? <clears throat> Let me say this. I just want to thank Excel Church and those of you joining us here online for just sticking in there with me as I've wiggle and toggle uh, with this uh, 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 foundation on relationships because you think about singles, you think about marriage, you think about widows, you think about all that thing. But the foundation is we're going to see it next week. We're going to stay in this. You, we got to have the word of God as our blueprint to have thriving relationships. So invite a friend next week. Uh, uh, cl click online there and uh, you can send a link and invite them to join us online. But we're going to move through it. Why? Because I realized at, at, after 25 years, Of marriage. Somebody say, uh, so you evaluate like that? I really do. I look at my wife now, I say, smile like that again. I say, my God, you look so innocent when you do that. <laughs> wow. Look at that. I'm still mesmerized. Still discovering. Because she's still evolving. Do you want your wife to evolve outside of you? Yeah. <laughs> It's like, man, 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 let him evolve. Let him evolve. So I'm still discovering this thing, and, and we're going to, like I said, in this relationship series, we're going to hit some stuff that's going to challenge all of us. But in the end, God will take care of us. Amen? If you want to be born again,